blocks on the right hand side there. It belonged to Patterson Marine Lines for many years, which is based in uh, Thunder Bay. But unfortunately, Patterson had a couple of misfortunes and uh, had to sell off its line to other people. It used to be, um, it was built in 1959. It's a bulk carrier. Up on the hill is uh, Lake Superior State University. You can see a red roof up there. It's about all you can see through the haze today. That is the James North Physical Education Center where the Hockey Lakers play. Hockey Lakers have made it to the national finals a few times. Uh, it, it, Lake State itself has an interesting history. That was the location of the new Fort Brady. Old Fort Brady was uh, on the left just before you come into the lot there. They're from 1824 to about 1880 some. And unfortunately, we had one of our big booms in the city, and the cost of living got suspended to the army down there in the water.
on the Caramar Cat 41. It's a barge now. Buckets on the underneath, the underside of these uh, unloading bridges can be used to unload vessels. But what they usually use it for is to move raw materials from the dock storage area to orange train cars on top of the trestle. They've got one positioned over a pile of limestone and one over the packetite right now. These train cars then take the raw materials to the blast furnace where there is a little skip car, kind of a cable car kind of arrangement that hauls stuff up and dumps it directly into the furnace. Open open. 
The car is swept the Assiniboia and the Crescent City to the lock at an estimated speed of 40 miles per hour. Fortunately, there was no loss of life, although considerable damage was incurred by the vessels involved in the accident. The next day, paper, the captain of the Crescent City was quoted, however, as saying that he thought he now held the record for the fastest downbound blockage. <laughs> or passengers on the vessel that they thought that was the normal way to lock down. Mm -hmm. Wait, it's just so glassy out here. One of the really pretty sandstone structures here at the canal is on the left. Uh, that is the home of the lock master. Was the, and there's the field for any uh, paper plant tonight. It's a very paper plant. Mm -hmm. Up ahead you can see uh, gate three steps into the edges of the canal. That is where the old lock used to start. They don't use those gates anymore, but that'll just give you how much an idea how much shorter it is now than it used to be. We're going to be using the lines on the upper right hand side to tie up down here in the lock. So we ask anyone who's in those locations please to get back behind the yellow lines. And we'll tell you a little bit about some of the other buildings when we get down here. It's got a deterrent, but I don't know how well it's working there. On the left also up ahead you can see the administration building for the Canadian lock. Uh, that's where the lock master works. He decides who gets to go up and down and when. you about a couple of things here. We're doing just about what we did uh, in the other lock, only in reverse. We're going to be going down.
you look up on the left as we're coming out of the plant here, you can see on the other side of the hill, kind of a putty-colored building. That is the uh, Canadian power plant for that hydroelectric dam we saw. That is Francis H. Clerk Generating Station, which opened in 1983. The water turbines are among the largest in the world at 27 feet in diameter, which is about three feet higher than our boat is wide. 